enthusiasts. Today, we're delving into a topic that's bound to supercharge your training regimen and take your performance to new heights. We are going to show you six drills that will make you run faster. We're unraveling the secrets of sprint enhancing plyometrics, exploring the science backed exercises that can propel you forward faster than ever before. Get ready for a deep dive into the world of bounding, skipping, horizontal jumps, and more. Whether you're a seasoned sprinter or just starting on your athletic journey, these insights are tailored to elevate your speed game. So, lace up those shoes, hit that play button, and let's sprint into a session packed with knowledge and power. This is Track Flash, and today, we're unlocking the science of speed. In the ever-evolving realm of sports science, the pursuit of speed stands as a central focus for athletes across various disciplines. A compelling study published in the December 2010 issue of the British Journal of Sports Medicine sheds light on the effectiveness of bounding, particularly in relation to sprinting and jumping. The study, titled Temporal Evaluation of Sprint Bounding in Sprinters and Jumpers, underlines a noteworthy correlation between bounding exercises and a 20-meter fly and a 30-meter standing sprint. While correlation doesn't imply causation, the researchers advocate incorporating bounding into training regimens for two key reasons. Firstly, the movement of bounding closely resembles sprinting. Following the principle of specificity, exercises mirroring the targeted activity yield more effective transferability. Secondly, literature suggests that bounding improves stretch shortening time, a crucial aspect involving the rapid stretch and contraction of muscles. This phenomenon is integral to both plyometrics and sprinting. Straight leg bounds, in particular, offer additional advantages. The limited range of motion at the knee forces the hips and feet to work harder. This is especially beneficial for individuals with underdeveloped hip and foot muscles, often a consequence of tight hip flexors and prolonged use of sneakers. For optimal results, performing these exercises in spikes or barefoot is recommended as it allows for a more substantial push through the feet, unlike the potential limitations posed by thick running shoes. Diving deeper into the realm of plyometrics, a meta-analysis presented by the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research titled The Effects of Plyometric Training on Sprint Performance, a meta-analysis, consolidates findings from 33 research papers. This comprehensive review focused on the impact of plyometrics on sprint performance. One standout plyometric exercise highlighted in the meta-analysis is skipping. Beyond its simplicity, skipping, especially for distance, proves highly effective. Setting up cones to measure progress adds a layer of challenge, encouraging athletes to refine their technique and reduce the number of skips required to traverse a set distance. The majority of benefits observed in the studies were concentrated in the initial acceleration phase, crucial for athletes engaged in short sprints or team sports. Another noteworthy inclusion in effective plyometric exercises is horizontal jumps. Concentrating all effort into a single all-out repetition, these jumps aim to cover as much distance as possible. To mitigate potential stress on the knees during landing, opting for soft surfaces such as the beach or an indoor track with sand is recommended. The meta-analysis suggests that the most significant results are achieved with programs lasting less than 10 weeks, comprising a minimum of 15 sessions at high intensity with over 80 combined jumps per session. Moving beyond singular plyometric exercises, the meta-analysis emphasizes the synergistic benefits of combining different drills. Among these, squat jumps involve vertically jumping from a seated position, ensuring consistency by starting each jump from a predetermined knee angle of 90 degrees. Counter-movement jumps, closely correlated with sprint times, can be enhanced by performing them barefoot to ensure a soft landing and engage all muscles effectively. Similar to squat jumps, the recommended training period is 6 to 8 weeks, with 3 to 4 sessions per week. Depth jumps, the third in this power trio, have demonstrated significant improvements in the initial steps and the first five meters of a sprint. Researchers assert that the combination of running and weighted depth jumps yields notable benefits, as each movement uses the stretch and contract cycles differently. 
In conclusion, plyometrics, when approached holistically, offer a robust strategy for enhancing sprint performance. The meta-analysis recommends a 10-week program, three times per week, incorporating depth jumps from a 0.3-meter box with a five-second interval between drops. However, it's crucial to remember that individualized approaches are key. Experimentation is vital to discover what works best for your unique situation. A noteworthy aspect worth considering is the impact of plyometrics on pre-adolescent boys. Studies show marked improvements in sprint velocity and step length among boys aged 9 through 12 engaging in plyometric exercises. If you have a younger sibling, introducing them to these exercises early could set the stage for future athletic success. In the pursuit of speed, understanding the science behind plyometrics equips athletes with a valuable toolkit. By incorporating these findings into your training routine, you're not just sprinting, you're sprinting smarter. <laughs>